They're every parent's worst nightmare. Enough already. I told you to stop complaining. Kids completely out of control and taking over the household. <laughs> These families have reached the end of the road. You can't get one more. They're in desperate need of help. They only have one alternative left. Damn. It's time to dial Nanny 911. Hello, this is Nanny 911. We've gathered a team of world class nannies from all over the globe. Each week from Nanny Central, they will watch a video of a family in crisis <laughs> and decide which nanny is best suited to help. They will then have one week to take our families from living hell to a family bliss. Look at me, I'm serious. There are gonna have to be some major changes that go on. That's the plan. Can these families be saved? No, we leave her. It doesn't have to be this extreme. I am trying to show you a better way to do this. Oh. Parents of America, help is on the way. Hello. Tonight, Stevie and John McElvain have found that four small children equal four big problems. I know I hate you because I hate you. Just go to your room. I'm done. The kids spend the days destroying the house, leaving Stevie to do the patchwork while John does the real work. These parents can't get together on anything. Why don't you get out of the kitchen? The discipline is gone from their home, and the spark is gone from their marriage. You're getting frustrated with me. Yeah, now. I'd just like to end this conversation. If these parents don't get it together, they'll never last another 10 years. <laughs> Luckily for them, there's a new nanny in town. Can Nanny Yvonne save this family? When you spank your children, John, it's you that's lost control. It's you've lost that loving feeling. Oh my goodness gracious. On Nanny 911. My name's John McElveen. I'm 43, and I'm a uh, freelance videographer. I have uh, four kids. <laughs> My wife, Stevie's really a great mom. She's got a great deal of patience. Jack, settle down. Hey. No, no. OK, I'm done with a smart mouth. You said have to be bad, man. No, I did not. I spend all my time juggling kids, their activities, their misbehaviors. I don't get time for myself. Last page of homework. Let's just get this done so we can be over it. I need help. I have four children, and their ages are two to seven. Sam, the youngest, is two. He is in the throes of the terrible two. Let me get dinner started, and then I'll deal with you. He's into screaming right now to get his way. Not going outside, bud. <laughs> he uh, he likes to hit me if he gets mad. He, eh. Stop, 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 stop. You are wired. Nope. Nope. Andrew, my three-year-old, he's come out of the terrible twos now, and he's just kind of turned into uh, Dennis and Menace. Hey, 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 what are you doing? If I say no, he tries to find a, a good time when I'm distracted to take advantage of getting whatever he wants. So. His mind's working a mile a minute, and he wants to get into mischief all the time. If he sees something that's tempting him, he can't resist a temptation. He jumped out. Then there's Jack, and he's my six-year-old. And he's finally kind of stepped into the world of the big boy. No, come back here. He can sometimes be mean and get angry and just decide he's going to hit somebody. Jack, he's got a big fat red mark on his arm from where you hurt him. And he's either, everything is great, and I love you, Mom, it's wonderful, or else the sky's falling, I hate you. Oh, I know I hate you because I hate you. Let's go to your room. I'm done. And then lastly, I have Madeline. Madeline is my only girl. She's seven. She is my helper. She's easygoing. She's upbeat. She wants to please. Ever since she's been a baby, though, she is incredibly tenacious. Maddie, I've had it with the kicking. 
Stevie's role is one that covers just about everything. She does the bills, she takes care of the kids, she cooks, she cleans, she's, you know, she's spread very thin. I do feel a lot of times that the burden is all on me. There's nobody else to pick up the slack. I have to be able to juggle everything and handle it. No! Yes, we'll do it later. No! You know, we both have kids. We can both see what needs to be done. And I think that he needs to take the initiative. That's probably one of the prime things that we get in fights about. My biggest challenge as a father would be not losing my temper and in all honesty, I don't want to spank the kids, but it's about the only thing they really uh, respond to. I want you sitting on the bed right there. If I find toys out, you're going to get a spanking. Okay. Go sit down. I would like to be able to sit down with the whole family and have a nice dinner, have table manners, have everybody sit in their chair. We're going to be celebrating my 10th anniversary, and I would like to be able to sit down with the whole family, children included. I'm just afraid that mine aren't going to be well behaved. I'd like it to be a nice family, you know, Norman Rockwell kind of dinner party. Eat your breakfast. I've had it. Stop it. Open the door now. What did I tell you about locking the door, Jack? Get down now. I've asked you three times. I'm done. So what do you think, girls? That child's scream could shatter glass. Where are their manners? These poor children are completely out of control. We need to show them how to properly discipline their children. Having reviewed this case, I have decided that Yvonne's loving nature is right to tame this family. Yes. I'm Nanny Yvonne from Coventry in England, and I've been a nanny for 15 years. From what I've gathered, the McIlvains have some serious problems. Stop the kick. Every time you kick, somebody Stevie is overrun by her four unruly children and has absolutely no idea how to discipline them. Her husband, John, doesn't do much around the house, but when he does step in, he tends to lose his temper. I want you sitting on the bed right there. If I find toys out, you're going to get a spanking. Go sit down. This is going to make him crazy. I've been called to Florida to help them out because teamwork is my specialty and I've got just seven days to do it. So let's get down to business. Hello. Oh, hello. I'm Nanny Yvonne. Hi. And I've come from Nanny 911. Nice to meet Please you. Too. I'm hoping that the nanny can pull our family together, but she doesn't know my children like I know them. I think she's going to have a bit of a battle making it work. After our initial introduction, it was time to begin my observation. Straight off, I saw Jack snatch a glass of milk from his younger brother, Sam. My very first impression was that Jack was a little rude and aggressive. You can't be polite. You're going to get in trouble. You understand? I'm going to get upset. This is your mom. Don't hit me. Stop. Yeah. Sam, stop. He's in the middle of terrible twos right now. It looks like the children in this household need to learn some proper manners. Are you supposed to be in manager? Look at her room. The whole room was all clean, the bed was made, and you've trashed the entire room. Out. Seems like I'm fine with one or two, but with four of them going off at the same time, it just falls apart and I can't get them to behave. I'm hoping that the nanny can help me rein them all in. I've never seen such a mischievous lot of children in my whole life. Stevie is overburdened cleaning up after these four, while Dad does nothing to stop their aggressive behavior. Hey, John, can you hand me um, one of those, like, plastic bags? It's good that you're so handy, honey. <laughs> OK. We're only halfway through the day. And already I have seen Stevie help prepare breakfast, 
get the children ready and off to school, um, clean the dishes away. Clara, chili, enough. Walk the dog, prepare lunch, do some laundry, fix a vacuum cleaner, and um, John has, hmm, let me see. He sharpened a knife. Having two women in the house is uh, kind of a plus. I mean, as far as if Stevie can get the help that she needs, especially with my busy schedule, um, it's really going to be, you know, take a lot of the pressure off of her and allow her to, um, to do the things she needs to do, not let things get backed up and feel like she's so overwhelmed. It's become quite apparent to me that Stevie does all of the parenting alone and John does hardly anything at all. Stop making excuses for her children and start disciplining them. <laughs> Mommy, it is and John's refusal to pitch in certainly isn't helping matters at all. <laughs> Mommy, oh my! Oh no! Andrew! Oh no! Oh. Just a minute. Your brother's just ruined Madeline's brand new pillows. Look. That's her brand new pillow. And you've just marked it up with the, the blue pen. And it's not coming out. And it just gets old after a while, because you can't have anything nice. But as soon as you get something you know, that you like and you get excited about, it just gets trashed. Isn't that a no-no? Didn't we already talk about that? You're not allowed in there. Out. Andrew, come here. Get up. When John does step in, he's far too rough. Better come here. <laughs> now, let us go. Get up. You can say sorry, and then you go into your room. Get in bed. Now. Can I tell you to pick this up? It's become very apparent to me immediately is how John and Stevie are on complete opposite pages as far as disciplining the children. So that is quite a major problem. After a day with the McIlvains, I had seen enough. It was time to sit them down and have a talk. I have noticed that you've, you do both have completely different parenting ways. Stevie, you do seem to be firmer with the dogs than you are with the children. And when you are asking them to do something, you're saying it in a, in a wishy-washy way, and they're getting away with it because they can feel that you don't really mean it. Isn't that a no-no? Didn't we already talk about that? You're not allowed in there. But then, John, you do seem to use a lot of threats. I want you sitting on the bed right there. If I find it... toys out, you're going to get a spanking. And after breakfast, John, you have laundry to do. You know, step up. Stevie is pretty much responsible for that. Come on, you need to offer to help a little bit. Stevie has a hard time asking you. So you've been telling him that, huh? Uh, yeah, OK. Talking to the two of them together, I'm beginning to suspect that their problems go much deeper than parenting. We'll have a lot to discuss in the morning. After observing the McIlvains for a day, I formulated a plan to help them become more unified as a family. Sitting them down is never easy. Well, I have the family plan for you this morning. It's going to make your lives easier. So I would like you to start with working on respect. I noticed when breakfast was being handed out to the children, I didn't hear a please and a thank you. I don't want eggs. OK, eggs are good. Another thing is responsibility, because, Stevie, you really are doing an incredible amount of stuff, and we need to take some of this workload off you. John needs to pick up a little bit more responsibility. It's good that you're so handy, honey. And consistency. I have noticed that you you do both have completely different parenting ways. It's my fault. I got I got him all riled up and told him he could jump on the bed. If you can't be polite, you're going to get in trouble. It sends a little bit of a mixed message to the children if one of you saying one thing and another one saying another. So if we can get you to be a bit more unified, that's going to send a clearer message to the children. So does that sound simple enough? 
I think her plan makes sense, but in the daily life and the craziness of stuff that goes on, I don't think it, it would work. I think Lenani's plan is too idealistic, and most of the stuff we've already thought of. After presenting the plan, I decided to look in on the children. The children's behavior is always a reflection of the deeper problems in the household. I'm gonna help with some ideas in the home so you guys can get along better and be happier. Oh, I never get along. You'll never get along? Mm -mm. Well, guess what? I'm gonna surprise you. I'm gonna help you get along. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because I think you're I great think kids. We'll play that work, you know. I'm really yeah, like a kick in the soon. But right now. Well, that's not very nice, Jack. <laughs> <Show you. laughs> I have no clue why they actually started a fight, but I was getting the feeling that it was quite typical behavior. <laughs> Jack and Maddie, that's enough. <laughs> Does mommy and daddy let you fight like this together? Yes. They do. Okay, no, Jack, that's enough. Stevie and John have really got to stop their children from roughhousing so much. It's not okay. Maddie, okay, if you hit him back, he's gonna think it's okay to hit, keep hitting you and it's not okay. Okay, then you know what you need to go and do? You need to tell your mum and dad. And tell mum and dad how it's making you feel, okay? Hey, Jack, there's no hurting of any kind. She's got red marks on her arm from where you pinched her. I don't see any red marks. Madeline, show him the red marks if he doesn't believe you. She does, just take my word oh, for I it. See it. No, I see it. No more hurting. Instead of yelling at him from inside the house, she should have gone outside to where Jack was, got down to his level, looked him in the eye, and clearly told him that it was not OK to beat up on his sister. After witnessing Stevie's weak discipline methods, I decided to give her some hands-on instruction to help her improve. You know, I just don't think about it, you know? Yeah. It's hard to break old habits. It is. <laughs> don't throw, don't throw. Remember to be firm as well when you, you know, that he could hurt someone. So don't get do down, that. get down to his eye head. Well, Stevie. Hey. Hear me. Make him look at you when you're talking to him. So you've got his attention. Don't throw them. That hurts. You don't like owies, do you? Stop it. Stevie seems receptive, but she really needs to prove that she can go it alone. And at bedtime, she'll be doing just that. What are you supposed to be doing? Play. No, you don't get to play. It's time for reading. Go pick your book. Jack, I want the cards put away. I'm getting ready to read. Jack, you've got a count of five. Start putting the cards away or I'm going to take them. Two. Yay. OK, that's it. I gave you your chance. No, I'm done. That's it. Stevie, I know it's hard, but you did the right thing. You gave chances and you gave a consequence. The consequence was if you didn't do what they asked, they were going to lose that privilege. So tell them tomorrow we'll have another chance. Okay. Okay? That sounds fair. We missed out on, on reading books tonight because you guys couldn't calm down. You miss out, I miss out. That's the way it goes. You can try again tomorrow. If you guys can calm down, I'll read you a book. I even let you pick the book. Okay? We'll see you in the morning. Andrew, just let him go. While Stevie made strides with her discipline last night, she still needs to learn to share responsibilities with John, and that is what we'll work on today. John's job as a freelance videographer no. means he works part-time at best, so there's no excuse for his lazy behavior. When John is home, I do think that he needs to take the initiative to go, oh, Sam needs a new diaper, or the boys' room's a mess. You know, we both have kids. We can both see what needs to be done. Stevie's obviously not getting the message about sharing the responsibilities. I'm going to have to have a talk with her. You haven't stopped again all morning. You've cleaned the whole house, you're vacuuming, you've made the bed, you've done the laundry. You know, you haven't been delegating anything onto John. It's easier for me if I just do it myself. I just know what I want to get done, and I knock it out. And you know what else? It's easier for John if you do it, too. I'm the caretaker in the family. He is my fifth child. What's become clear to me is that John is the real problem. He needs to appreciate what a great family he has. He must start helping around the house and stop threatening his children. 
right on me. <laughs> I've only got four days left, and if I want to help this family at all, he and I are going to have to go head to head. After working with Stevie for a day, I need to focus my attention on John, who seems to be the real challenge in this family. So, John, today, I would love to see you help out with the laundry and help out with lunch. And my one other request is to help organise the boys' room, and I'm going to give you a hand. I'd like to see Stevie just actually just take a moment, go and take a bubble bath. So, John, there's lunch and there's laundry, and let's go and organise. Even though I only ask him for a few hours of his time, I can see the resistance in his face. I don't know what I want to do now. John's busy and the nanny's got him whipping the room into shape. It's interesting to me that you say, you know, you want me to do things that I haven't done. And, and generally speaking, I, I do most of the lunches. Uh, I'd say laundry is something I don't do. John is both defensive and in denial. PJs, I don't think they need to be washed. What he doesn't understand is that if he doesn't buck up, this marriage will fail. Nanny said that one of the areas that she'd like to see me work on is to take some time for myself. But when I ask him to do something, you know, he kind of acts aggravated about it, and then it makes me feel bad. What can I do to help? Ooh, hummus. Yummy. It smells really good. I'm starving. All that hard work in the tub. Go sit down. Just go sit down and eat, okay? I mean, I'm sitting there working on this whole time, and then you come out and don't sit down. So you haven't eaten yet either? No. Well, why don't you come sit down with me? Just eat. I sat down to have lunch, and um, I thought John was going to join me. You know, we can grab a moment, and I just wanted him to sit with me. John's resentment is so great, I'm worried that nothing I say will get through to him. He goes from being aggressive with Stevie to encouraging aggressive behavior with his kids. This is a pattern I'm going to have to break. You want your sword so you guys can battle? Get your sword, Andrew. These children have lots of weapons. They have lots of swords. There's really only one thing you can do with it. Try and dig at each other with it. If you have another toy that has multiple opportunities of what you can do with it, you're going to get a lot more out of that toy. But what are you going to do with a gun or a sword? I just believe there's so many more positive things children can be playing with. Well, I think you'll notice that if you take them away, oh, they'll pick I up know. anything. No, I'm not talking yeah. about the yelling and screaming. And they'll, they'll pick up that brush and start going pow yeah. pow with it. Letting them have, you know, play swords or or play play guns or whatever is really increasing their their aggression towards each other. I think it sends a mixed message to allow a child to use that as a plaything. They tried to force their opinion on me. They have their opinion and I have mine. I don't think there's a problem with it. The parents are fighting and the kids are fighting. Unfortunately, even a simple family meal becomes a horribly stressful situation for the McElveins. As I watch John and Stevie prepare the meal, I see no communication with each other or with the children. Andrew, can you stop with the forks, please? The children clamor for attention, and John and Stevie ignore this problem just like they ignore their own problems. Andrew, I asked you to stop. I just want you to stop the noise, OK? I'm not doing it. These two just don't listen to me. While Stevie tries to discipline the children, John laughs behind her back. He constantly undermines her. to me that their relationship is so strained that the children will continue to misbehave until they see John showing respect for their mother. When I first came in your home, I felt that between the two of you, there was a lacking in pleases and thank yous to one another. And you do take each other for granted. And so 
One more thing that I would like the, the two of you to do is to talk to one another. I want you to remember why you fell in love to begin with. Be nice. Yeah. <laughs> Have a relationship besides just a parenting relationship. Absolutely, because you both really need to learn that if there is no love in the relationship, it can have serious consequences on the children. You twisted your neck. Um, Do you need a nice pack? Jack, I'm gonna help you. I'm gonna find that ice pack for you. Okay, and we're gonna leave no. mommy and daddy to talk for a minute. No. Okay. And then these comments about my wife and I relationship, I didn't think that was necessarily warranted. You know, I thought this was more about the kids. I do think that we take each other for granted. Maybe it would be better, you know, if we could joke around a little more and have a little more fun. Well, that'll come with, you know, having the kids regimented and doing their thing. Yeah, but her point is that we need down. to make that happen. Right, honey, and that'll come. I'm looking for some ideas from you because I want to feel like you're fully involved. You know, you, you're not telling me a whole lot. Stevie and John are just not getting along at all. My presence has obviously brought things to a head. I kind of just feel like I would feel better if we had a plan or... Did you want to sit down and start writing down on a piece of paper? No, I don't want an outline. Well, that's... You're getting frustrated with yeah, me. Yeah, I'd just like to end this conversation, actually. Okay, well, that's fine. So, uh, Consider I mean, it just, done. It's frustrating to sit here and go over it. Okay, that's fine. And from here on out, things are either going to get better or much worse. John needs a better understanding of just how much Stevie really does. And the only way for John to respect Stevie is for him to spend a day in her shoes. Hey guys. Hello, Nanny. How's it going? Good. Good. I have a surprise for you, Stevie. You are going to go to a spa and you're actually going to have a massage and a facial. Oh, no way, really? You really are. That's great. So, like, tomorrow I get the massage and facial? Because, you know, I'm just wondering when it turns back around to, like, you know, to me. One of the things that irritated me was that I think that Nanny thinks that, that I was just coming home and laying around and, you know, Stevie, give me a beer kind of thing, and, and that's just not the way it is. Stevie needs the instruction on how to deal with the kids, too. Oh, thanks a lot, honey. <laughs> I'm working on it. I'm working on it. Yeah, you're doing a great job getting that massage. That's... Cheers. John is so sarcastic and resentful that I'm not sure if I can have an impact on him at all. sticking it. Stop it. We need to try. Dad, come back. Okay, are you ready to go to your room? John is obviously not used to taking care of these children. He's realizing that Stevie does so much at once. Come on, guys, we're doing a lot. And it's clearly too much for him. Maddie, what did I ask you to do? All right, you know you're grounded for the uh, weekend. John is having difficulty managing his children, and his patience is being put to the test. This can only get worse. Get in, guys. I just got it. Maddie, put your seatbelt on. I already had one call from John, so I just turned off my cell phone and. You know what? He's got him. He can handle it. <laughs> Be nice, guys. I'm just not going to worry about it. Having all four kids to myself can be extremely hectic. Don't stop me! Hit me! Pick that up. I'm not kidding. You don't throw stuff around the house. Don't say ow. Nothing hurt. John's obviously not used to the chaos, and as the day passes, his patience is clearly wearing thin. All right, that's enough. I said that's enough. <laughs> as bedtime nears, John looks like he's at the end of his rope. Jack, get ready for bed, or I'll get you ready like a little baby. Okay. No. No, no. I really hope that I don't have to step in. One more no, and you're going to get a spanking. Yeah, have you fun? 
Get up and get your stuff on. Now. About two seconds, your arm's getting pulled off. Listen, I'm not dealing with this well. You go get in bed and we'll read a book. Or you can just go to bed. What do you like to do? I told you, Jack. I told you how many times? Go to your room. No. Go to your room. No. Yes. Go to your room. You can just get on your bed now. All right. Get in your bed. Finally, get yourself. Cut it Stay in your bed, Jack. No. What do you think is going to happen if you get out on that bed? You'll get another spanking. Come on, Claire. I'm sorry to hear that. John lost his temper with Jack, and as a result, I needed to have some firm words with John myself. I know old habits are hard to break, but this has got to stop. You know, the fact that uh, I feel like you're putting kind of undue stress on my relationship with my wife uh, disturbs me greatly. You've asked for my help, and I'm going to give it to you. Are you saying that I'm not a good father? No. Is that what you're saying? No. I want to help you to get your point across without it resulting in a spanking. The whole thing about saying, you know, I shouldn't be threatening. They're afraid of you because you use threats and fear to handle them. You will accomplish much, much more with positive reinforcement. I know that you love your children, John, but these threats have got to stop. After having to raise my voice to John, he finally began to show signs of remorse. You know, the fact that, uh... You know, I ended up breaking down and, and spanking him uh, disturbs me greatly. I'm really quite upset about the whole thing, actually. It's OK to get cross. It's OK to be firm. But you just don't have to follow with a spanking. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I just kind of failed by resorting to spanking. Mm. Some parents still believe in spanking as a last resort. But it shouldn't be done because of your own loss of control. John's defensive wall finally came down. I sincerely hope that he realizes the error of his ways and makes amends with everyone in the family, starting with Jack. Do you want to try this kind or a green one? The following morning, John seems to have really taken our talk to heart. First thing on his mind was to make up for the spanking to Jack and spend quality time with him doing his favorite activity, Fishing. That's how you do it, right there. You catch anything? Wait a minute, let's see. You do? Go, pull. Yay! Hey, nice going, buddy. You came off, but that was all right. I really regretted giving him spanking. OK, here you go, Jack, right here. The only person I could blame was myself. You reel it in. I don't want to be the one to catch it. You catch it. Nice going. You caught that one. We'll get another one later. Over the next few days, John really began making an effort to get involved with his family and their daily routine in a positive way. <laughs> his natural parenting skills were really starting to shine through. You can turn it around and do another face on the other side if you want. Stevie is getting the sparkle back in her eye. John and Stevie have made such a huge improvement. They were so far apart when I came to this home and now they're beginning to meet in the middle. The whole family is reaping the benefits. <laughs> the children are playing together so peacefully. And as John's mood brightens, they begin to see a father they can look up to. Now that John has gone a long way towards making amends with his children, he needs to turn his attention to his wife. If John and Stevie can rekindle their spark, their whole family will surely fall in line. Nanny's warning of serious consequences if we neglected the, our relationship. I took it to heart. We do tend to take each other for granted. Our relationship has deteriorated a bit. It's a good thing you're a good cook. Stevie, uh, she's really an incredibly lovely person, and, uh, and I'm really lucky to have uh, been with her all this time. And so I wanted to make a date night, kind of start up a courtship again, which is something that we really haven't done. We haven't, we haven't gone to movies or gone out dancing or anything in, in a very long time. 
I'm proud of John. He told me he wanted to spend some time with Stevie alone, so I arranged to take the kids to Grandma's for the night. I think Nanny went above and beyond, you know, by taking the kids and taking them to Grandma's and setting it up so that we could have a nice intimate dinner tonight. And I'm excited to do that. I'm excited to, to have Stevie to myself for a few hours. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Here's to our new mission, to make ourselves a priority to each other. Mm-hmm. Love you. Love you, too. John, thank you. You're welcome. Full moon. Aren't crazy things supposed to happen during full moons? This reminds me of the good old days. I miss doing this. Me too. I know I'm being girly and silly. You know, I know that you didn't necessarily like the way that we ended up asking to marry. And um, I thought maybe I'd ask you again. <laughs> mm. Give me another 10 years, what do you say? <laughs> I wouldn't have it in the other way. What's that? <laughs> What's that? Oh, my goodness gracious. <laughs> uh. That looks good. <laughs> I love you. Mm, I give you 20 years, 30, 40, and you're, <laughs> you're stuck with me. You don't get enjoyed. <laughs> It's the morning after John and Stevie's romantic dinner, and I can't wait to find out what his surprise for Stevie was. Oh, hello. Hello. Hi. How are you? I'm great. How are you? Uh, I don't know. You know is there anything new and different about Let me, me today? Uh... <laughs> we had our, our second engagement really? last night. This is a pretty flashy ring. Mm -hmm. It's uh, There's four rounds for each of the children. And then there's six other diamonds in there that oh signify God. 10 years altogether. Oh, how do you feel? <laughs> that was wonderful. I was in tears last night. I was a complete oh mess. My so. Oh, my goodness gracious. <laughs> Give me another 10 years. What do you say? <laughs> <laughs> I love you. So do you think that you can find this romantic side of you again? Oh, absolutely. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> this is probably the most memorable dinner we've ever had together, actually. For the first time since I've been a nanny, the children weren't the main problem. In order for this family to be saved, this marriage needed to be saved. And I can now happily say that my time with the McIlvains is at an end. And all that is left to do is say goodbye. Jack, please give me a lovely big hug. I'm so proud. The children are much happier and far better behaved than they were at the start of the week. All of our trying times have made for one of the most rewarding weeks in all my years as a nanny. Bye, Andrew. <laughs> you've been so much fun and you've worked so hard. But the biggest improvement has been made by John and Stevie. Their renewed love and commitment for one another is reflected in the calmness of the children's faces. I can't thank Nanny enough for coming and helping our family. Our house is running much more smoothly. John and I have rekindled our romance, and she's helped our lives in so many ways. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. This was a very special week I spent with the McIlvains. It may be the first time in my career I've helped fix a marriage. I do hope so, for the sake of the children. I'm going to go get dessert and be right back. On my kitchen table is this envelope. I knew it was from Nanny. Hey, Woo! look at look that. At that. Oh, my oh, my oh, my Lord, look at that. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I'll look over, and there's this huge camper parked in our driveway. <laughs> the kids love it. John loves it. We can have family vacations together now, thanks to Nanny. She's helped our lives in so many ways.